You're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, does your backyard give you nightmares? I mean, literally nightmares. Marcy's does. She'll explain. Also, how to get rid of something truly, deeply, really sentimental and significant for 500 bucks. Well, happy fake spring. <laughs> it's nasty out here. It's pretty it's awful. It's snowing, sleeting, snowing some more, raining some. Okay, I don't go anywhere. <laughs> Half of our yard has about five, six inches of snow, and the other half is like five, six inches of muck, like just dirt, mud all the way down. I don't even, I'm not even walking over by the pet cemetery because I might find something. You might fall in, fall into the grave, just like those old movies. (laughs) I'm I'm more worried about something being sucked up into my boot, like some dead animal. How can something be sucked? How can it be sucked? This is morbid, but we're done with this. How can, wait, how can it be sucked? (laughs) You tried to make me throw up in the last podcast. Now it's my (laughs) turn. How, How come it would be sucked up into your boot? Wouldn't your boot have to go down and then the dead creature would have to fall over yeah. the top of your boot yeah suction it's good old-fashioned <laughs> suction like if i went down six inches into the muck and had to move my foot to hold the boot on so i can get it out of the muck and there's something dead nearby it's gonna yeah. leap out and, and, and land something inside small. your boot this makes no physical sense at you're all. gonna give me you're gonna give me nightmares tonight I was I, up all night I last didn't. night. Well, how did I do it? Why were you up last night having nightmares? Why? Because somebody on Facebook said that they have holes in their yard and they wanted to know if it was prairie dogs or voles or moles, right? And it and I see these posts and I'm just like, you're stupid. You know, who cares what's in your yard? Well, wait, I don't know if it's a prairie dog, a vole, or a mole. I'd like well, to know. Well, who cares? I care. Why, why do you care? I I want to know how big a varmint it is. Oh, uh, well, you don't need to know. Prairie dogs are way more destructive than moles and voles. You can't do anything to them, though. You can, and most of them are protected. You can accidentally stick them with a pitchfork when you're getting your garden ready. Don't ask me how oh, I know. That's just mean. Accidentally. <laughs> we had them in Flagstaff, but they're not out here. Wait, anyway, I, so I read this on flag. I read wait, this on Facebook. Wait, wait, are they? Do you say they're endangered? They're protected. Prairie dogs are protected. Yeah, some kinds are. You have to like ask a uh, fish and game what kind they are, and certain breeds of them. And uh, they really frown on you killing them. In some areas, like where we lived in Flagstaff, they would round them. There were groups that would round them up and take them elsewhere. So I see you rolling your eyes. I can't figure out if that's better or worse than your cat rescue trip to Utah <laughs> with a rental truck full of screaming hellcats. I can't figure out. What's I did that worse. like five or six times. I know. I think a truck full of prairie dogs would be just quieter. But go ahead Oof. now to your nightmare. We did have a cat, by the way, when we lived in Flagstaff, and he would climb into the prairie dog holes. And if we're gone, as you drive up the driveway, you would see his head sticking out, just looking <laughs> around. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was funny. Anyway, so <laughs> I get no sleep. Frankie gets no sleep. But I'm sure it's because of this whole question. That's a pun. Get it? Whole question. Oh. On Facebook, <laughs> I dreamed that we got up in the morning and there were holes all over our yard, but they were big holes. <laughs> right? And... Then we're like, what the heck? What the heck? And Frankie's just like, oh, well, I'm going to work. And so the, we went to bed again that night. And we got up in the morning. The holes were full of teenagers in camouflage. I can see why that's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, they were really mean teenagers, like skinheads and stuff. I don't know. They look like from Mad Max, those kinds of teenagers. Ooh. Huh. But yes, it was really creepy dream, and I just kept having it over and over again. And Frank, he said, I just kept yelling out. <laughs> he was doing everything to try and wake me up. But I'm sure that that it's because of the mole, vole, prairie dog hole question on Facebook. 
I guess this is our version of a movie review ex e e episode here. episode here. How, how does my movie go for you? Well, because I've been sick, I've been watching more movies than I usually would. It happens that my one of my streaming services, the one I get free with my phone, has had some movies that I really want to see. And one of them, I had no idea what it was. I had just heard that it was an important movie to see. And it was basically weird and then disturbing and then upsetting and then back to weird and then just kind of nauseating. Name it. I think it's called All of Us Strangers. I haven't seen that. No, you, you thank you for your review. You don't need to see, see it. it. I have no problem with gay love stories. Neither do you. No problem there. No problem with, you know, a little erotic action. No problem there. But what was weird was this whole I see dead people thing seems to have taken a turn for the modern. And then you add to that drugs where you hallucinate more dead people. And then at the end, there are actually dead people who stink from being dead. Wait, so I'll have smelly dead people coming up out of my holes yeah, tonight when I yeah, go to sleep. Yeah, so there we are. So you tell me what's worse, your dead prairie <laughs> dog hole dream or stinking dead people. Who aren't really... You watched a movie. All I did was read a Facebook post. I know. Some people just have a low nightmare threshold. Imagine what would happen to you if you watched the movie. I should create a movie around this. Bad teenagers in camo coming up through giant holes. I think it's been done. Really? What, what was that, that book that got made into a movie? Holes? I believe it was actually oh, called that, Holes. No, that's a whole different... No, Holes is a Disney movie. Never and mind, then. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with that. I thought it was but, creepily um, disturbing, and then Disney Disney got hold of it. And, like, no, they holes is everything. about little kids, and the bad people make them dig holes because they're looking for treasure. Well, see, that may then, be true, but I would also posit to you, and I'm not doubting your account of all of this, but I will say that the minute Disney gets hold of something, no matter how grisly or disgusting or disturbing it may be, all of a sudden it has bluebirds and canaries flying around it and everybody's singing. Everybody's zippity doo dah, right. except for that one, which is banned. It's the only one that's which, been banned. Which one is banned? The zippity doo dah one. Oh, yeah, because it's racist. Yeah. There's a person who I've admired in radio for a long time. This is going to make sense in a minute. Even though I know perfectly well that he's a little bit mean, a lot mean. And at one point, yeah. I thought I might be able to work with him. And then it turned out, mercifully, that he didn't want to work with me because he wanted to be the big boss. And it was my big boss show. So good luck there. I was wearing the bossy pants for that show. In any case, somebody posted on social media about an imminent loss in the family. And it happens that this guy and I have both uh, have both worked with the person who is sh shuffling off this mortal coil in the not-too-distant future. So I read his comment, and it didn't seem mean, and I thought I would just take a look to see what else is going on in his life. And I found that he had made a comment for no reasonable reason to somebody's LinkedIn newsletter, and it was just mean upon mean upon snarky little mean. And I thought, nothing about you has changed, except that maybe you're just meaner. And then I thought, when you were on the air being mean, at least it was funny and it was for ratings. But what's the percentage in being mean about somebody's little online newsletter? What, what, you got to be rotten to the core and do that, really? There's a lot of mean people out there. Yeah. You need to watch more TV. Oh. Okay, more Judge Judy, is that the idea? No, just if, if you're just flipping channels, you're going to see so many mean people. I watched this show last night by accident just because I couldn't find the remote. <laughs> and it was a uh, deal or no deal oh. in the jungle, right? And and it was like the dumbest show. But people were so mean to each other. First of all, I don't look at myself as a mean person. Second of all, at the very least, if I knew there were cameras on me, I would fake like I was nice. <laughs> I don't because you they, have to go home I, at I, some point. I don't think they hire them for that in uh, in in reality TV. I seem to recall, and I don't watch any reality TV, but whenever I have the misfortune of reading an article about people on reality TV.
there are always people complaining that they were told to be meaner. And, and I'm thinking, okay, well, you have two choices here. You can be meaner or you can say up your nose and quit, but you know, you're not gonna, and that's why they hired you. They hired you because when they tell you to be meaner, you go, okay, right boss. Okay. I always wonder about the people that go on any of these judge shows because you're making yourself look like a moron. So this is going to seem like one of those Russian nesting dolls. Russian things. nesting doll, yeah. There's a, he used to be a radio guy, he's a doctor, and now he's over there on the dark side of reality TV, and I have no respect for him, and he says all kinds of things that you know for a certainty that he doesn't believe, and he's way too hung up on TV stars and movie stars and skinny little women, but leaving all that aside, before he went over to the dark side, he was a really good doctor on the radio and somebody asked him about how they cast these reality shows and he said they're actually (laughs) pretty good at picking out the people who will be good on these reality shows they're all of them narcissists they don't really care what they look like just as long as everybody is looking at them and then it turned out he really did know what he was talking about because he was one of those people and became a reality tv star hmm see i i would very much care (laughs) You're not the type that that would make the cut for no. this. There's a there is a type. They go looking for a type, and, and not I, me. I know this type. I've and a lot with of them, them are very uneducated, by the way. Very many, many uneducated. Many of them are yes, because yeah, most of them. I, in fact, I except for this guy who's gone over to the dark side, he's educated. <laughs> I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, I think there's more than one doctor that's done this. I used to love that show. I really did. But again, when you work in radio, you work with a lot of these people. It's just there's never enough for them. Nothing's ever enough for them. Speaking of enough. Yeah. Juke Perry's going to that big wherever they dump jukes in the sky tomorrow morning. Oh, Marcy's old car, dead for good. And I'm get I'm getting four hundred and ninety five dollars for my baby. It's not your. I'm so sad. When we're done, I have to go out and go through it and look under all these seats and hopefully find maybe a winning lotto ticket or a hundred dollar bill or something. Okay, what do you realistically? Clean it all out. What do you realistically expect to find at the bottom of that car that you've driven for better for worse for ten years? Um, probably the keys that I lost. I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I kept that car pretty clean, and then I let the kids drive it. I'm, and that was kind of his death now. I'm keeping a car that's 20 years old, and, and all I'm really hoping is that one of my favorite earrings can be located in between a seat cushion. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only reason I'm keeping the whole car. I just well, the, the problem with the juke is that they didn't really think it out when they built it. And so if you drop something between the middle console and the seat, you no one's hand fits in there. So I always had a ruler in there to be able to knock out whatever's down there, like driver's license, keys, e-fob that you need to get the doors open, stuff like that. So that's where I think everything is hidden. So there's a rule. So it's like the secret place, the place, like the sword in the stone. That's the, yes. the location for the magic sword that's there. Yes. And I'm going to wear like three headlamps. I'm going to take all of Frankie's headlamps to be able to see what's in there. I think you should, I think you should frame that ruler. It's done a valuable service all <laughs> these years. And I mean, sure I'm glad can. you told me what that was there for. I always, when I saw it before, I wondered if, if you had aspirations of being a violent, 1970s era stereotypical Catholic school nun or something. Yeah, no, it's so I could slap whoever's riding shotgun and criticizing my driving. Uh, same idea, yeah. So the car goes away tomorrow, and you get 500 bucks. What are you going to do with it? Um, I don't know yet. I wouldn't tell your daughter that you have it. You know. Well, I was going to say I could do something nice and give it to her and say, "Here, put it toward your car." so that I don't have to drive you anywhere anymore. Or I could hide it in a drawer and save it. I could put it in the bank, but then I'd just spend it on a bill. I don't know what I'll do with it yet. Well, that'll be for the next podcast. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. 
Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 